says your shoulders should slope just a little and that that is aesthetically pleasing and a perfect human being. However, some of us are more square, some of us are more slopey. So what I want everybody to do is to sit up straight and tall in your chair like there's a string on the top of your head and it's pulling you all the way up to the ceiling. I want you to take in a deep breath so it fills your frame and squares out your frame. Then I want you to release the breath, but don't release your body. Okay? Now, I want you to take a look at everybody's shoulders around the room. Okay? Remind me your name. Addison. Addison Sloper has sloping shoulders right here on his shoulders. That would be considered industry standard slope. <laughs> Remind me your name. Padma. Padma. You can see how she has less of an angle and her shoulders come up more at a right angle right here. So she would be considered square shoulders. Humberto, yeah. Can you see how his have a really exaggerated slope? That would be a sloping shoulder. Now, it doesn't mean it's a good, bad, or an ugly thing. It just means that if you have a sloping shoulder and you're wearing a woven shirt, that your sleeve is always going to look like it's too big and hanging off the edge of your arm. And if you have a square shoulder that sometimes the sleeve feels too small right there at the top and it restricts your movement a little. So we just need to change this angle in order to get it to fit your body. That's all we're doing. Okay. So this one, we're going to do a seam method. So we're still gonna be taking a shoulder back to start with, and we need to change this angle up here, which means I have to be able, and it's all gonna happen in the seam allowance. So I'm gonna start down here at this pivot point, and I am going to cut off my seam allowance, making sure I hold my dart closed, and I'm gonna cut two here, and then I'm gonna cut a pivot right here so that this whole seam allowance will hinge off to the side. I really got to stop drinking Diet Coke before I come in and do alterations. I have zero scissor control because I got caffeine jitters. It's pretty sad that four ounces of Diet Coke give me caffeine jitters. Okay, so now my seam allowance is loose. My dart can lay back straight. Does that make sense? Now, because I'm doing a sloping shoulder and I am subtracting a quarter of an inch from the shoulder angle, which means right here at the neck needs to stay the same, but I need to be a quarter of an inch lower over here on the arm's eye. If I have done a quarter of an inch seam allowance, then this is easy because I just lay my seam allowance over the top of my paper and then tape that back in place over here on the arm side and I'm done. If you have done anything different than a quarter of an inch seam allowance, then you need to make sure that you're just dropping this a quarter of an inch. Okay. So I'm just going to make sure that it is right on the edge of my paper, that my paper pattern is flat. I'm going to adjust my arm's eye down here to make sure it's back out on the original line. And it's finished. And you can see my original, oh, my original pattern piece is now shorter and smaller. And my seam allowance is just tacked on there on the edge. Does that make sense? Okay, that is the seam method. When I am altering patterns for people or for myself, depending on the location of the alteration, depending on how many alterations need to be made, I'll, sometimes I'll use the seam, sometimes I'll use pivot, pivot, sometimes I'll use slash, sometimes I'll use a combination of all three to get the job done. This is just, I don't have a preference one way or the other. I just want you to know all three so you have all three tools in your toolbox. Okay.